The pandemic has been overshadowing another public health crisis in Ohio, opioid addiction. Overdose deaths spiked to record levels last year, reversing a downward trend. Mark Nemec investigates how money from a landmark settlement is being used to fight the problem and what services are being overlooked. Overdoses spiking last spring as the pandemic took hold and prevented some from getting help. So it's really a little scary to see it dry up, not just from a business perspective, but knowing that people weren't accessing care. We're seeing people in long-term stable recovery relapse and relapse and die as well. Then a crushing wave. Our wait list moved above 200 clients for detox alone for the first time in the history of maintaining a wait list. 602 overdose deaths in Cuyahoga County last year. The majority involved the powerful opioid fentanyl, often mixed with other drugs. The county sued pharmaceutical companies in 2017 for their role in the epidemic. We spent hours and hours and hours and hours of our staff time uh, with the lawyers preparing for the lawsuit. Drug makers agreed to settle in 2019. After lawyer fees and other costs, the counties cut $117 million. It first spent $23 million on existing drug treatment programs and to expand recovery options. But the bulk of the settlement, more than $60 million, set aside to launch a program to divert low-level drug offenders from jail to treatment. The program begins next month at the Addiction and Correction Center Oriana House. The county is eyeing the former Juvenile Justice Center for the program's permanent home. That doesn't leave much, about 20 to 25 million for other treatment options. I personally believe that a larger portion of the opiate settlement money should have gone to agencies and organizations that have been helping battle the opiate crisis for years. After pandemic related delays and requests from nonprofits, the county finally sought proposals for tapping the remaining money. The Edna House, which offers women abstinence-based treatment and long-term housing, is seeking funds to add more beds. We take anybody that comes to the front door or calls on the phone. We're ready, we're waiting, we have the staff. You know, we just need some more beds, that's all. The pleas for help, often on display. I've seen women get down on their knees and beg God to keep them sober one more day. Even before the county started taking proposals from treatment providers, it had received more than $150 million in informal requests. It underscores that this health crisis, which is shifting from opioid to other drug use, still needs attention. I'm Mark Namick, 3 News.